Good morning everyone, I am Dhananjay Kumar and I am MVP on Connector System. In this uh, learning video, I am going to show you how you can work with WCF Data Service. WCF Data Service is an API which helps you to, in, to expose your data source as a, a REST based service. Uh, for the theoretical introduction of uh, WCF Data Service, you can go ahead and read my articles. Uh, WCF Data Service, OData, ADO.NET Data Service and Project Astoria is nothing but the uh, four different name of the same thing. The bottom line is that uh, WCF Data Service allows us to uh, expose our data source uh, as a REST based service. We can perform all the CRUD operation on our data source um, as a, a REST based service. Anyway, uh, now I am going to show you the um, how we can work with WCF Data Service. This sample is a very uh, basic sample where I will be exp uh, well uh, at the step one I will be creating a data source, at the step two I will be exposing the data source using WCF Data Service and at step three I will be showing you how we can query in the URL itself. So uh, this is my uh, database which I am going to expose. As a REST based service um, using WCF data service, I have this DB a student DB this got one table, a student table, and if you see this table got some records. This table got uh, some uh, four records, and I'm going to uh, expose this table uh, operation, CRUD operation on this table as a REST based service. So, at a step one, I'll be creating a um, data source using ADO.NET Entity model. At a step two, I'll be exposing the data source um, using WCF Data Service API. And at step three, I'll be showing you how I can uh, query in the browser itself using the URI query options. So, go ahead and open your Visual Studio. Just open a new project. Since WCF Data Service is a service, it must be hosted somewhere. So either you can uh, create a web application to host your WCF Data Service, or you can uh, create a WCF service app to uh, host your WCF Data Service. For our purpose, I'm going to um, uh, use ASP.NET Web Application, which is going to host our WCF Data Service. And here you can uh, change the name. On uh, I'm just uh, leaving the default name here. So step one, I have created a basic ASP.NET web application. This web application is going to host our WCF data service. It's creating. So it's successfully created. Now you go ahead, right click on your web app and add up the ADO.NET, add a new item and from data tab add ADO.NET entity data model. The purpose of this ADO.NET entity data model is to create a data source for you and we will be exposing the data source as a uh, uh, using WCF data service. Uh, the only requirement of a data source which can be exposed, uh, the CRUD operation that data source can be exposed using WCF data service provided that data source has been implemented I updatable and I queryable interface. So I'm just leaving the default names. We want our uh, data source from on DB. Here uh, for me that data source, uh, that particular db, s 2 db dot db which I shown you here is listed there. Uh, but if for you, if it is not listed in drop down, go ahead and create a new connection to your db. And here you give your uh, server name. This is my server name. If you don't know what is the server name of your DB, just go ahead here and see what is written here. This is your server name B263 TRV SQL Express. I am saying this for the beginners. Sometimes uh, you don't find what is the exact server name of your DB. So you can see that what is the name coming here, the caption is your the name of the server. So just give that name, press refresh. And since uh, we are going for Windows authentication, now in the drop down you should get the database, here this database, just test connection, test connection succeeded and ok. So I have selected from the drop down the DB which I want to expose, 
okay and here that db has came here if you want you can change the web dot config uh, configuration connection string name but let us leave it to the default and here we have selected at a student db dot db from this particular server just go ahead and next let us say your database contains a uh, uh, hundred of tables but you don't want to expose all this uh, those 10 table as a WSF data service so what you can do is that you can choose from here that which table you want to be uh, from the from the database you want to be part of your data source since we got only one table in database so we uh, here only one table is listed here if you got views and a store procedure that you also can choose from here but in our database we got only one table there is no views there is no store procedure again I am leaving the default value default name the space and just press finish by completing this step we have created a um, data source for us and you can see that uh, uh, that in model one dot edmx because we have not changed the name of the model a data source has been a table has been created if you go to your solution explorer you can see that you got now two more file one is model one dot edmx and another was uh, one is model one dot general ocs if you click on this source code you can see the amount of source code uh, edo dot entity model has created for you anyway now uh, we have created a data source up to this point now go ahead to your web application and add a new item now go to your web tab in your web tab you can see uh, there is something called wsf data service right and the extension of that wsf data service is dot svc just add that and here a wsf data service has been added for you now if you see here here they are saying to do put your data source name here right so just delete this and our data source name is a student db integers if you remember i have not changed the default name over there right now we are saying that uh, that this particular data service wcf data service it is name of our data service is inheriting inheriting from a generic data service class which is taking a student db integers data source which is taking a student db integers data source as a uh, as a data source on which we are going to expose the CRUD operation as a REST service. Now, if we come here, you see that config dot set entity access rule is commented here. Now, here, just uncomment, just uncomment this, and here we need to set the access rule for each entity in our data source. If you see that entity set dot write got this access rule or all right or read or write none read multiple read single. So, if you are doing or read. No, if you put if you are putting the access rule as or read on a on your uh, entity set a student a student is our name of the table then on the student table you can perform only the read operation you cannot perform create delete and update operation got it you got uh, and if you want to perform all the operation in your table just put all fair enough and here either you can put the name of the entity or you can put a star if you are putting a star then same access rule will be applied to all the uh, table inside the data source and what is the purpose of the next line i'll be explaining you next video let us say you have some uh, service interceptor and query interceptor and you want to expose that those service interceptor query interceptor on a, ex on a particular um, uh, as part of your data service or not so i'll be explaining this uh, meaning of or purpose of this uh, particular line in the next uh, tutorials for the timing we really don't need to you know, know that we uh, now so up to this point we have created our WCF data service also what we are saying to our WCF data service that I want to expose a student DB entities uh, as a REST service and please uh, set the access rule on all the entity inside this particular data source as the all and we want to perform all the operation on the on the table of this particular data source now go ahead and compile your solution and now just run your app so we have created a data source then we have created a um, uh, we created a um, wsf data service now i'm going we are going to uh, um, test that data service in a browser because it is a rest based service we should be able to uh, to test this in a browser client
if you see here uh, oh sorry it has opened the um, sp.net app for us I just did a mistake here is that just go ahead and make the double just go ahead In the meantime, I'm just opening Notepad. Oh, my computer is getting hanged. Just uh, bear with me. Yes. In the Notepad, just I'm increasing the font of the. Then it is, I guess, already, already 28. Fine. So. I just saw in the notepad I'll show you the URL which we are going to access just go ahead here and in the solution explorer right click on your data service and make it as a set as a start piece and then run your app by default our web application was the a startup piece now here you can see in the browser that you are getting the WC data service all right so this is coming in the browser that on the local host WCF data service the service one dot SBC is running now if you see here you have that only one collection and that is a students because we got only one table inside our data base so we know the inside our data data source so we know the name of the table just go ahead and type up in that you can see that we are getting all the records inside the students table So I have just appended a student's name of the table with our data service name and I am here to able to get all the record in the browser. Now if you want uh, if you want to see the metadata of your data source just go ahead append a question mark append the dollar sign and metadata. See here is the metadata so to see the metadata what you need to do is that after your service name just say just append dollar sign slash metadata. Now let us see. We want to query a particular record in the browser. Sorry, STUD. STUD and PS students. Fine. Now you go ahead here and if you want to perform a particular like let us say we want to fetch a record of the student with a roll number one. What we need to do is that up to here it will be same because we want to uh, fetch the data from um, sorry we want to fetch the data from table a student. After that what you need to do is that question mark then dollar and then filter. Sure enough filter equal to roll number roll number is the name of the column here roll number is uh, see here real roll number is the name of the column roll number eq let us say one now just go ahead and copy paste what i have done is that after students i put a question mark and then the dollar filter which is going to filter record for you equal to roll number eq one and we are saying that if roll number is equal to one then uh, give us that particular record now go to your browser and just this is I guess I'm just uh, I have just put the Let me see the um, uh, name of the column. It seems it is uh, name of the column is not correct here. Name of the column is roll number. Let's go ahead. Question mark dollar filter equal to roll number EQ that is one let us say that what is the roll number we have here let's 
So we can see here is that uh, when we have uh, put question mark dollar filter equal to roll number equal one, we are getting the the record of the re uh, student roll number one. If you put two here, you are getting two. If you want to fetch the top two record, so the query to fetch a particular student is this. Now, if you want to fetch top two record, let's go ahead question mark top equal to 2 and here we are getting top 2 record in the student table so this was the this was all about wcf data service so introducing wcf data service that how you can create again i consolidate a step one i have created a, a web application step two i added a new element in that web app as a edu dot entity model and we created our data source step three we created uh, we added a new item wcf data service and and make the made that wcf data service as a startup page of our app and then I shown you that how in the browser we can perform the different operation. Uh, looking forward to meet you again. Thank you so much.